How much money invested do you need to earn $10,000 per month? The answer might surprise you. Just imagine earning $10,000 every single month or $120,000 every year for doing absolutely nothing except collecting income from your investments. This amount of income could provide a very comfortable lifestyle for you and your family, allowing you to spend your days as you choose. Do you want to travel and see different parts of the world? Do you want to spend your time volunteering and helping others with no need for additional income? Having this money coming in without having to lift a finger will reduce the amount of stress in your life and could lead to many wonderful things. Let's find out exactly how much money you'll need to save up to generate this amount of income for the rest of your life. We'll also examine other avenues to significantly reduce the amount of capital needed. My name is Chris and I help teach people about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're interested in improving your financial future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if this video is helpful. Earning $10,000 every month from your investments is the equivalent of earning $60 per hour for 40 hours every single week. That's pretty substantial, considering the median full-time wage or salary worker in the United States in 2021 earned less than $52,000, according to policyadvice.com. Bringing in $10,000 per month would allow you to comfortably spend up to $3,500 per month on housing and $1,500 to $2,000 per month on transportation when abiding by traditional budgeting metrics. That should be enough to have a comfortable home and newer, reliable means of getting around. Even spending this amount on these two largest household budget categories, you should still have a decent amount of money left over for travel, leisure, and other expenditures. Traditionally. Experts suggest you can withdraw 4% from your investments every year with annual adjustments for inflation with little chance of ever running out of money. This figure, found by the Trinity study, suggests that withdrawing 4% from your investments every single year would be sustainable for 30 years or more. The study analyzed various markets throughout history and found that this withdrawal rate is still considered safe, even if you were to retire during the worst possible time in stock market history. There are many people who believe 4% is too high, or too low, or that it's an outdated benchmark, but it's a reasonable guideline that can be used as a rule of thumb. In some years, your portfolio will earn a 10% return, some years it will return 20%, and some years it will be negative. 4% is not your total average investment return, it's simply a safe withdrawal rate. In order to withdraw 4% from your portfolio every year, or $10,000 per month, you'd need 25 times that amount, or $3 million. How on earth would an average person save up $3 million? Let's say you are starting with no money, but plan on retiring with $3 million in 40 years, which is less than the average working career noted by Forbes. By investing $20,000 per year, earning a 10% rate of return, and increasing your annual contributions with inflation, you'd have just over $3 million adjusted for a 4% inflation rate by your projected retirement date. That's certainly a sizable feat, investing consistently over that long of a period of time. Not to mention saving $20,000 per year when many families are living paycheck to paycheck. However, a two-income household would only need to earn $50,000 per year each in order to save a reasonable 20% of their salary. If this seems out of reach, there are many ways to reduce the amount of money needed so you can begin earning $10,000 per month much quicker. The good news is that you don't necessarily need $3 million. While the 4% withdrawal rate relates to stock and bond investments, there are other ways to achieve higher yields. For example, some dividend investors are comfortable achieving a 5% dividend yield or higher. This means they're receiving a 5% return on their money without considering stock price appreciation. When a dividend investor is successful, they receive the dividend payment for holding a stock and the price of the stock outpaces the rate of inflation. By utilizing this strategy, you're able to live off dividends while the value of your investment continues to rise over time. Of course, this is highly dependent on the type of stocks or funds you purchase. But when looking into other stock investing strategies, it is possible to withdraw more than 4% of your investment gains each year. If you are able to achieve a 5% dividend, you'd need $2.4 million to earn $10,000 per month, or 20% less money invested. Purchasing real estate is a popular investment vehicle, and for good reason. 
there are always people looking to rent a home under various circumstances. Perhaps they aren't financially prepared to buy one on their own, or they don't plan on staying in one area for a long enough time to make buying worthwhile. This presents an opportunity for investors who aren't afraid of a more hands-on approach to increase their cash flow. Receiving a 7-10% to cash-on-cash -cash return on your investment with a long-term rental is attainable. This means you would receive 7-10% to in cash flow each year and the value of the property will rise. Compare this to receiving an average 1.5% dividend from the S&P 500 in addition to the rising share prices. If you were able to receive an annual cash flow amount of 7%, you'd need roughly $1.7 million in real estate to earn $10,000 per month. If earning a 7-10% to cash-on-cash -cash return seems unreasonable with a long-term rental, there are so many in-demand housing options in real estate. Many landlords find success in renting out a home by the room, like a boarding house. The tenants share the common space, such as the kitchen, living room, and sometimes the bathrooms. Each tenant pays their own portion of the rent, sometimes on a weekly basis. Many people are unwilling or unable to afford an entire home or apartment, and this scenario is beneficial to both the property owner and the tenants. The tenants enjoy the benefit of having a shared home, which many people enjoy. Oftentimes, the landlord will provide a cleaning service to maintain the common spaces so the burden of that shared responsibility is reduced. In return, the landlord receives a higher amount of income due to the extra management required. Renting out a home on a short-term basis is another way to generate more income than would be possible with a long-term tenant. This is ideal for property owners that want to earn more income, and it's perfect for travelers who prefer staying in a residence instead of a large hotel. Depending on how hands-on the owner is willing to be, they could handle as many or as few as the day-to-day -day tasks required of running a short-term rental. If they were really feeling ambitious, they could clean the property on occasion, which pays a surprisingly high hourly rate, often $50 or more per hour. If you need a way to substantially reduce the amount of capital needed to generate $10,000 per month, there are other options. While not quite as passive as collecting dividend checks as you lounge on the couch, many ideas could bring in some income requiring very little effort on your part. One way to do this is by renting out a portion of your property. This doesn't necessarily mean bringing in a roommate like you're in college. It could be renting out a portion of your yard for someone to park a car or a camper. People will gladly pay hundreds of dollars per night if you have a desirable spot for someone to set up camp for a few nights. Even if you only charge $100 per night, this could add up to $3,000 per month. This means you'd need $2.1 million in additional capital instead of the initial $3 million needed to bring your monthly total to $10,000 per month. Another option that could bring in some relatively passive income is by generating an online presence. Blogs can seem outdated on the surface, but they're actually still quite popular. Publishing online articles will require some time and effort, but then once completed, the income will continue. You could also start a YouTube channel reviewing products and provide affiliate links where viewers can purchase the products presented. After a while, You'll receive revenue from the ads displayed on your videos and affiliate income when your viewers purchase your products. Even TikTok content creators are bringing in sizable amounts of income and the constant scrolling of short videos make it easy to reach hundreds of thousands of people. Creating and maintaining these types of revenue streams does require some upfront and continuous work, but they're still considered passive when compared to working for a salary or hourly rate. Of course, these scenarios don't consider the taxes you'd be responsible for. It's difficult to predict the taxes that could potentially be owed due to the fact that each of these income streams are taxed in different forms. A rental property is taxed much differently than portfolio income, which could consist of a 401k, IRA, Roth IRA, brokerage account, and so on. Additionally, there are numerous possible combinations of income sources that would present a different tax bill. Your best bet is to work with a CPA to maximize your tax situation. There is a variety of options for those looking to earn $10,000 per month, ranging from entirely passive to methods for those who enjoy a more hands-on approach. While it's possible for those earning a typical income to achieve this amount of monthly income with traditional investing over a long period of time, there are unlimited options to speed up the process, allowing you to begin collecting your $10,000 monthly checks sooner rather than later.